All right. All right, everyone is muted. So Don, what are we gonna be talking about tonight? Well, we should be talking about getting your hives ready for winter time. Right now is the time, this is September, if people haven't looked at their clock or the calendar. So I would have done at least two uh, treatments for your mites and I'd be doing your change outs. So uh, if you're new to beekeeping or trying to be treatment free, I would suggest three to five treatments before December. Get those bees in shape to go into springtime. And it's a good time to do a change out, which, you know, I got videos on that. Just get another box and change all your frames out one at a time. Now's the time to check for stretch comb, old comb, comb it's just absolutely no good or double comb, start cleaning them up, one or two frames in each box. It's a good time as you change idea what's going on in your bee yard so you know what the bees look like. And uh, now it's not a good time. People have sent me emails about putting pollen patties on. Uh, we're in South Georgia, so we still got a lot of uh, heat up here. We don't use pollen patties. Usually after about the middle of August, uh, we don't put none on at all. We won't start putting any on at all in a small amount in January or late December if the weather starts to warm. Uh, if you put a pollen substitute or pollen patties, you're going to increase your rate of beetles. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is a lot of people don't understand. They got honey in the box and they're pouring feed on. If you put too much feed on that hive and you got an ample supply of, of honey in there, you're going to increase the chances for beetles to multiply in there. Uh, I haven't touched on that in a long time, but if you got any weight at all, I wouldn't be feeding them. Uh, when the weather cools down, I would put a feed on them if you need it. But right now, everybody should be getting into a goldenrod flow. So goldenrod actually by itself will carry your hives through. And Jeff is asking about robin. We uh, try to keep our robin down to a minimum. It's just like bees are like humans. If they're hungry, they're going to eat. And if the bees got ample food supply in there, they're not going to go out to their neighbor and start robbing. So that's what I would be checking for. And I definitely wouldn't be doing no open feeding right now. <clears throat> if you're going to do open feeding or any kind of feeding with buckets, close it up inside the hive. Just get an empty box, put it over your brood chamber, put your right. feet on, close the box. Keeps your, your robin down. Right. Does that help you out there, Jeff? Yeah, uh, yeah. I got one very, very strong hive uh, that I noticed was picking on one of the smaller ones. I, you know, you do the two, you know, you narrow down the entrance, try that. I open it up for a bit just to see what was going on in there. Um, I did a lockdown for a day, <laughs> and I, I got a couple old frames of honey. I always have some old frames of honey that I, I put out elsewhere, and so I think that kind of distracted them. But uh, that very strong hive, I was, I'm, I'm going to be checking again tomorrow, but uh, I think what, I think I may have induced the robin because the, the hive that I, I had put in a, um, some uh, sugar feed with a little bit of that, uh, uh, with that, some of that, uh, those this is oils. Oil. Yeah, and Don't that attracted. It. Lemongrass will set them off right now. Don't yeah. use that time of the year. Yeah, I learned that the hard way, oh, a little bit of the hard way. But the, the most interesting part was they were going into the tray. Actually, it was in this one of those plastic beehives I picked up, I was experimenting with. Mm -hmm. And so they went up into the feed box and you know, when I went in there to check that, they must have had about 200 dead uh, hornets inside that thing. <laughs> so it turned into, if anything else, turned into a good hornet trap. Yeah. But the, the queen and the brood and all that stuff were fine. They were all off to one side anyway. So if they're off to one side, if you got a 10 frame box, you might yeah. try putting them into a five frame box. Uh, yeah, they that's actually my, that's my next plan. Yeah, that's my next step. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, once I go through the boxes here, probably tomorrow, we've had some heavy winds these last couple of days. I haven't been able to do it, but uh, I'm going to put it into a small new box. 
if they're reduced down that much, you might want to do an alcohol wash and check for mites. Yeah. Because a lot of times true. people tell me they yeah. don't see mites. And normally when you see mites, it's already too late. Right. So right now, this time of the year where you're at, your hive should be full. If it's not, the population's dropping because you've got mites and the bees are hygienic and they're carrying them out. Those right. are things I'd be looking at right now. Right, right. Got it. Yeah, good point. So failing all that will be, I'll, uh, uh, after I rebox them, I'll, uh, I'll do that check and then I'll probably add in another uh, frame of uh, surplus honey there and uh, pollen. If you put I, it in, I may the relocate them. I may relocate them if it if necessary, I guess. Yeah. But don't, you know, if you put an extra frame of honey and put it in the middle, some people make that mistake and they put a frame of honey in the middle, you'll divide oh, that no. root up. <laughs> don't no, no, I put, it on the, I put it on the side for them. Yeah. yeah. But doing it in five, you'll actually, you know, they'll start to build out better. Right. Because right. you'll probably start to get cool nights. Oh yeah, we are. It's uh, about in the fifties every night now. Yeah. Well, it's probably in your area. It's probably normal right now for them to, to reduce. But you should have more frames of bees in there than that. Sounds like you got a mite problem. Uh, that's that's a possibility. Possibility. That I had a I had several hives uh, early in the year when I got them were. Uh, where the queens were not really properly bred and I replaced them all out. So this was a, I think the queen in this one is one that I put in a new queen late, uh, sort of midsummer. So she's got one frame of brood in there and I, uh, she got enough bees. I brought in some other brood from another hive and they should be hatching here shortly, I'd imagine. Well, you know, this time of the year, if you've got a weak hive, <clears throat> instead of using a newspaper method, you can, you got a shaking box you can shake bees into? Yeah, yeah. You can shake bees, a, a pound or two pounds of bees in a package or a box with screen over it, take them in the house and leave them for 24 hours. And then you can mm -hmm. just open the box up and just dump them in there. Give them a light spray of sugar syrup and they're good yeah. to go. That's yeah, that thought crossed my mind, high. yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, sometimes this time of year, some of our yards, some of the hives are really strong and some are a little weak, so we have to uh, go ahead and equalize them out that way. Yeah, yeah, that, that might be work too. Mm -hmm. Good enough, that's all. Okay. okay. All right, over to Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. There we go. <clears throat> I got a question about treatment. I got one of those uh, John O's Easy vapes. Mm -hmm. um, things really nice, but what I'm doing right now, and I think it might be ineffective, is I'm, I'm not actually blocking the entrance. I'm just kind of putting the nozzle and letting it spray mm -hmm. or uh, um, uh, vape into the hive. But a lot right. of it's coming right back out. Is that kind of a no-no? I've done two treatments well, so far. I'm just kind of I, I do that it. personally myself. When I was using the wand, I always put a towel in there or an old rag to close them up. You know, we have holes drilled in our boxes, so the bees, as soon as that vapor goes in there, they're going to spread it around. You know, if you don't think you're yeah. getting a good enough treatment, about a quarter of a teaspoonful, do it in two weeks, do it again. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, people, get those hands up. Ask your questions for Don. I'm going to have to start pulling teeth soon. <laughs> Jay, looks like Jay has a question. Unmute Jay and then you're good. Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Okay. Oh, uh, oh man, I'm starting to get them ready for winter. We're supposed to have some 50 degree weather or evenings, I guess, starting next week. Uh, mm -hmm. My plan is to go ahead and turn everything to where they're facing the south because I've had about half of them's facing to the north, and there's nothing between me and the North Pole. <laughs> so, is that a good deal? To yeah, but you're in, Texas. you're in Texas. You don't get cold weather. I get some cold wind every now and then. <laughs> no, 
Well, you know, there's a lot of people put too much emphasis on that particular thing. If you've been to any of my bee yards, my bees, they don't read them books. I got them facing whichever way I feel like facing them. So they seem to be doing good. That's kind of the way mine are for the most part, but I'm, I'm putting, I built some new stands and I'm putting them on them that are narrow where they don't have to worry about uh, sagging on the middle for me. <laughs> But uh, I thought what I was doing, I'd just go ahead and turn everything to the south before, before winter hits. If you got, you know, up north, I could see, you know, using a snow fence or something as a wind block, you know, behind your hives and facing them south. But, you know, I never read all them books that people keep putting out there. And, you know, I made a lot of mistakes in Ohio, and a lot of my bees are facing a lot of different ways. I even one year forgot to put entrance reducers in there. I mean, it was a learning thing. I went back two months later when I remembered it, and guess what? Bees had done propolize that whole opening down to three inches. So it taught me something, you know? So, you know, you can learn more from the bee than these books. Because there's a lot of people who write these books, two hives or maybe three. And some of them don't have proper terminology. They don't even know what they're talking about at the time. Yeah. That's and I'm no expert. I, I keep saying it over the years. I've made a lot of mistakes. I made more mistakes than you'll ever make. So I'm trying to help people not make the same ones, you know? Well, I'm making some of the same ones, but I'm trying to learn from yours <laughs> along with mine. Yeah. Uh, now, I've got on my five frag nukes, I normally don't put a, any kind of a reducer in through the winter. Uh, yeah. My eight and 10 frames. I'll put them in there sometimes. I don't always. Well, we haven't put uh, all of our five frames, the, the reducers in right now. Steve got a bunch of tens, taken out a bunch of eights in another yard now. I haven't been over there, but the last time I was over there was about five weeks ago. He said he ain't running them. He said he has better luck with more ventilation during the winter. But, you know, we're in South Georgia, so yeah. every, every area is going to be different. If that hive has got a proper amount of bees, they'll defend it. That's kind of what I'm counting on. Have you well, done your mite count? I haven't done any mite counts. I've done treatment. I need to do a couple more treatments in the next couple of weeks. Or so, mm -hmm. but uh, I I was doing mite counts the first year, but after that, I just started treating. I I haven't really done mite count. I got uh, two full-time people, and Jerry done one. Uh, he actually done some alcohol. I should have brought a dean it's sitting out there by the house there. And he's got about two or three ounces of uh, alcohol in there. And he says he shook all them bees real good in there, and he said he ain't seen the first mite. So, I mean, yeah. it just – it could be – I'm in an isolated area where I'm at right here. So we don't have uh, an abundance of other beekeepers around. Uh and we don't even have a lot of beekeeping trucks go down the road because I'm in the boonies, way out in the boonies. I mean, they send pigeons to deliver the mail out here. <laughs> so, you know. I've seen a few of those pigeons here lately. <laughs> up in Lula, you know, we've got beekeepers. I'm on a main highway, quarter of a mile on the main highway. If you take a commercial beekeeper with a, a tractor trailer load of bees going down the road and they's loaded with mites or beetles, they fly, and you get those little bombs coming out in your yard there. I don't guess I have any problem with that. I've got, I do have a commercial beekeeper that's oh, about five miles from me, but he'll bring them in sometimes. But that's about as close as I can get to him. Does that answer your question for you? Yeah. Well, at least you got a good question tonight. I get more questions when we don't have a lot of people. Wanda's got her hand up. You got a hands up uh, thing there if you yep, want to ask a I, question. I got her. Um, sorry, what's your name? You don't you don't have it listed. Get on Wanda. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, I have, actually I have two. Uh, I'm feeding my bees, but I never feed them in inside the hive. I I did that for the first three years, and I find more dead bees than I find food. 
So I, I feed, I actually feed them the sugar water out of a bird bath, which is away from all of their hives and they go there. Is, should I not do that? Well, I mean, if you're generous and you want to feed all the bees in the neighborhood, I mean, I have yeah. a video where I had five, five gallon buckets standing up in my bird bath and uh -huh. I stood them up inside the bird bath inverted and I did that because if they lose vacuum they start to leak and if they leak they go into the bird bath and then they can they can consume that there but you are going to feed a percentage of bees and and hornets and other things in the area there well, the hornets, I usually drown. I hold them under the water and actually drown them. Because I, I, well, I'm allergic to bees. I'm a beekeeper, oh. allergic to bees. So yeah. I have to be, yeah, I have to be careful. Hornets, you're not welcome. But I just wondered because uh, feeding them inside, even with the feeders that are closed, you know, they have the little vents like you can buy from Man Lake. Um, I'll tell you uh, what, I'm not promoting the feeders, but I got plans. And those are considered no ground feeders. And I have, you know, we run several hundred in the yard. They're high top feeders. And you might find one occasionally, but very seldom you find any bees dead. And I redesigned those feeders in 20 years, probably eight times. And if you watched all the videos, you could see all the different progressions. You know, download the plans, build it there, build one. Uh, you can do it with a milk jug on a smaller version, or you could do it with a shoebox and do a gallon and a half. They work good. Oh, okay. See, I, I, I originally had the the feeder uh, from Brushy Mountain mm -hmm. that goes over the whole box. Right. Oh, my God. And just the thing, you sit on top. I've never seen so many dead bees. Mm -hmm. I used them one time, and I, I got rid of them. I got well. I don't like to see a hundred dead bees, and you know, in one side, just because they drown. This you know, that is a good uh, medium to ask people. I have people all over the United States have built my feeders, and they can tell you the results that they've had with them. Now are, are we they, don't use that particular feeder anymore because it takes too long a time to fill it. We're using buckets because we can go through a yard and feed out two or three hundred in a half a day, no time. Oh, you got a lot of bees. You got a lot of beehives in. You got a lot of beehives in. And I got one more question for you. And don't hit me. Uh, for five years, I've never treated, not one time, for mites. And I've never lost a hive to mites. But not, now I'm like you. I live in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, I live 23 miles from the nearest town. Am I wrong to know? I've, I've never... Our problem here in North Carolina, I'm in North Carolina now. I'm in Eastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, the only, the main problem that I have is hive beetles. You're not close enough to the ocean. I've got two or three students that's on the Eastern side there, but they're uh -huh. close to the ocean. And they said they don't see the first hive beetle because of the land is either marshy or it's full of salt. <laughs> well, I live three hours from the beach but uh, a local beekeeper told us here he's never had any trouble with mites, and I've I, we've never lost a hive to mites, not ever. Hive beetles and ants, fire ants, yes. But well, what, what I'm seeing is not that big a problem. You know, you usually you bring them to your hive. Either you're putting pollen patties in there, or the hive's gotten weak. Yeah, if and see, so we're strong. You shouldn't have beetles. Well, what, what I'm seeing, I have one strong hive, but it sits underneath a tree, kind of in the shade. Mm -hmm. I have three that are very, very strong hives. Two brood boxes on top of them. That's how many bees are in them. But you will not find not one hive beetle. So my question is, is it because they're in the shade? Or is it because... The, the ones that are in the sun, you will not find no hive beetles. Well, if you look at my videos and talk to students, I've got a variety. I've got some in a real thicket. You don't get much sun there. I've got some in open sunlight. I've got some in partial, some in the afternoon. Yeah, I, think I do too. If you've got a hive that some people, if they see two beetles, they got an infestation. 
You oh, know, no. All hogs. <laughs> I'm talking 30 and 40 and 50 beetles. Well, uh, then, then, yeah. Then you do a change out. Now, sometimes the beetles will stay there a long time. They won't actually pupate into your uh, honey and that, but they'll be in there. Right. Have you seen damage from them? No. No, because well, I've would, always... If you see that many, is I would change the box out and take your hive tool. Once you find out where the queen is and move her, or once you get to the bottom of the box, take your hive tool and squash them. That's what I do. I mean, we kill them. Yeah. We kill them yeah. or run them out. And I also use the little black traps mm -hmm. that you fill with oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I use those. I put one on, on the first two frames and one on the other end in that particular hive. Now the other hives, I don't have any in because I don't need them. I don't see the beetles. I might see one, two, three beetles, but the ones that are in direct sunlight, uh, you may find one hive beetle. I think a lot of that is gonna be your queen. I don't think location's got a lot to do with it. Some bees are a lot more hygienic than others. Well, most of my bees are feral bees. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually caught them. I, I didn't buy them. I caught them myself out in the woods. That's the best uh, place to get them. Yeah, and they're mean as hell. Excuse my French, yeah, but they, <laughs> I was actually going to bite mean girls on the front of them. Now, <laughs> after about uh, probably six months, you know, when they calmed down and they died off and they rebred, they're not mean anymore. But when you first get them, oh my, and they're dark bees. They're, they're well, not. That could be the old German line that, you know, was originally around the hills and that. You know, I used to go out and get them. I mean, it's good stock, but it takes a year or two to get them calmed down. You got to breed yeah, them. Man. Well, and, and there was a lot of deformities in, at the first time. I don't know, uh, you know Jay, I'm sure. You know who I'm talking about, Jay from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say his last name. I know you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, not a Jack. lot of people I don't know. Yeah, Jack. Don't well, like he, uh, well, he's you know he's the uh, inspector up in Eastern Tennessee for mm -hmm. the state of Tennessee. So when I first became a beekeeper, he started helping me, and we caught our first swarm. And I was saying, why is this bee so big? He's like, this is a normal bee. This this larva is three days old. This is a deformed bee. See, I, I had never seen a deformed bee until we started catching feral bees. Usually but, you don't see deformed bees unless you get a lot of inbreeding or the queen is mating, you know, with her own genetics. Yeah, that's what he told me, but he told me to watch it. Uh, and we did. And after about three generations of bees, all of that stopped. Mm -hmm. They stopped, uh, they were opening the, the closed brood. They were, re they were opening the lot, they were opening them, them. So I knew there was something wrong with them because they were opening them, well, but they stopped. Hygienic. That's people try to breed for that. You got it natural selection. Right. And that hive today is just unreal. I mean, it's, it's so many bees. I, uh, it's pathetic which has been so hot here in North Carolina, we've had 99, 98. So it's hard to go in and check them. It's hard to, because I have to wear a suit because I'm allergic. Uh, so it's really hard for me to get in there. And that worries me too, uh, being so hot uh, and being able to check my bees. Are like you I, running uh, eight frame stuff or are you running 10 frame stuff? Uh, 10 frame. I think I would, if I was you, you know, do what you want to do, but being a woman, if you're going to work them yourself, I believe I'd go to an eight frame box. And even if you're not selling bees, I would go to all mediums. If the box are a little easier to handle and manipulate, because if you go out there and you're tugging away and you're hot in your bee suit, you're not going to go out there and work them. But if you go out there, it's a pleasure. You're going to work them a lot more often. Okay. That's a good idea. I never thought about that. Never thought about going to the eight frames. Mm -hmm. um, but let me let me ask you this too. Now, uh, I've, I've heard different, different people tell me different things. Um, 
Some people tell me if if it's an established hive and you see that they're they're bringing in pollen, you see that they're doing good, you see them up on the side of the front end, you know, the back end, wherever. You see the bees, you see their presence. Um, they tell me I need to be checking them every week. Not necessarily. See, well, see, I lost my first hive to that. Well, Mess, messing in them too much. <laughs> yeah. You know, that messing with them too much has to be defined. What are you doing? Are you making a living? There's people that's been in my yard and say, you know, you can't do that. And I mean, some of my hives twice or three times a day. Wow. And, you know, my production hives, I'm shaking in the outdoors. I go in there to shake packages two to three times a week, and I'm shaking frames of bees out. Wow. So I always tell people, there's a lot of advice out there. Good advice, bad advice. When people's giving you advice, ask them, how long have you been a beekeeper? I do. Do you, know, <laughs> the year? do you buy bees? Do you make a living? Is it a hobby? If somebody makes a living at it, they might just be doing something right. Right. Well, you know Kent Williams, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got his attitude. That's <laughs> like I told him, I said, well, you know, we – as a new beekeeper, uh, you know, five years into it, I cringe to think about killing a queen be and because my first year, I couldn't keep a queen in the hives. I don't know what I was doing wrong or they were doing wrong, but they would either leave or die or the bees killed them or something. So when he, he'd tell me, uh, if she's not producing, kill her. And I'm like, Kent, <laughs> you're in August and you're going to kill your bee. You're going to kill your queen? I, I see that that just, it, it, it kind of puts me in a panic mode. You know what I'm saying? There's an old saying for every action, there's always a reaction. You know, if you got people, yeah. I deal with a lot of beekeepers that never change their ways or never will. And they tell me the meaner the high, you know, the more honey it makes. Well, common sense says all bees got the same size stomach, so they can only <laughs> haul the same yeah. amount of honey. So right. If you're a glutton for punishment, keep working them. <laughs> you're right. So, that, so I agree with you there. I don't think them being mean has anything to do with what they produce. But I tell you, it, they do defend the hive. Now, uh, the feral bees that I catch, I don't have to have a problem with them. Uh being attacked by hive beetles. And I don't know, maybe in this area, we just don't have a big concentration of mite because I live, I live basically in a very rural area. Maybe 50 cars come down the road in front of me a day. Well, I was just talking to E, you know, we had maybe 12 cars on this road and I'm 500 feet from the blacktop road and it comes from a small town and it dead ends about a mile from my property here. So we don't get a lot of traffic. And in fact, it's 26 or 27 miles to the biggest town that you could buy anything at shopping. That's kind of how we are. Yeah. And yeah, so, that's you know, exactly how we are. You know, the biggest thing out here, there's no pesticides. And, uh, you know, my home yard, exactly. I got an idiot on each side of me that, you know, there, it looks like snow almost year round because it's either fire ant poison or seven dust all over the yard. So you're fighting that all the time. Right. Or now the fire ants, we have to, I have to treat for fire ants because, which I use the, the DNA around the legs, mm -hmm. but uh, the DNA does not kill fire ants. Here in the sand, I live in the sand hills, what they call the sand hill. We're saturated. Uh, probably 30 to 40 mounds of fire ants in my yard. That sounds good. I don't kill them. <laughs> Why not? Because fire ants eat protein. Any dead bees, anything comes out of any of the hives, it hits the ground, they eat it. Yeah, but I've caught them inside of my hives. Well, then the hive is weak. Right. I have so a fire ant hill under two of my stands at the house, and those hives are fine. I've had students come to my house and, and point it out. You got fire ants under there. I said, "Well, step across it." And they don't, and they don't, and and they don't bother your bees. You never, you've never seen them in your hive boxes. Now there's them little tiny, tiny ants. They'll get in a hive every once in a while, but no, I've never seen them. 
Now, if your hive dies, you get wax moth in there, you'll get those fire ants up there. They eat all that larvas out. So is that a good thing? For me, it is. With, okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. I, well, I've never I had that like situation. Poison in my yard. Period. Oh, I agree with you. We we don't spray. We don't spray. Uh, they don't spray out here because they don't care. We live in, right in the line on, on the on the uh, borderline of two counties. So neither county takes care of us, which is fine with me because I don't have to breathe pesticides myself, and they don't kill my bees. Yep. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the main thing. And and you were talking about Robin. Um, we've had uh, one hive this year that has been robbed already, uh, which it was a weaker hive, and I and I knew that. But before I could do anything about it, it was too late. Well, it was see, too. That's what I was just getting ready to tell you. A hive yeah. will defend itself if it gets robbed out. The hive more than likely had swarmed. Uh, you know, if you see a lot of bees bearding out on the hive, sometimes it's an indication. And then other times, it could be just that the hive has gotten hot and the population is high. Well, that's like the ones I told you that I have in direct sunlight, mm -hmm. and we've had 98 degree weather. Um, they're all over the box. Have you, you tried drilling vent holes? Well, the, the actual boxes, we make them ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's some little deficiencies in them. So they actually have a back end. <laughs> they actually have a back entrance. And some of them actually have a front entrance because of their, we actually put tape over one of them because the the hole was so big, but they like it. And they're well, producing drill an inch and a half hole or an inch and a quarter hole under your hand hole in the front, in the back and put screen over it that way to get ventilation. And if it's too much, they're just gonna propolize that screen. Okay, so just drill a hole. Under uh, the hand holes. Under the hand. Now the, the boxes that we build, what we do is we just take a piece of board and put yep. it all the way across the side of the box because it's easier to handle. Yeah, but they right out behind that, hole, that piece of wood. Ah. Uh. You know what he's saying? See, whenever you take a piece of wood and you cut it and then put it back together, you create a void there and it always rots out there. You uh -huh. can turn the, your box sideways and put a handle on your table saw. You know, that's how I do my handles on my table saw. Put four handles in about 10 seconds. Use oh, a table okay. blade. I got videos on it. Okay. And, and do you have videos where you actually dr have drilled the holes? Because I'd like to see that because we need ventilation. Now, I I have one um, screen bottom board, mm -hmm. but I, I'm I'm afraid to use it. To be honest with you, I'm afraid to use it. I've never I've ne it's it's sitting in the B building, never been used. I always use solid bottom, and it's because I've listened to to many different people yeah and so i'm scared you know i don't want to lose twenty thousand bees because i changed their bottom board and and mess them up in my situation what i found board. is is if i leave the more i leave them alone the better off they do well not always you know bees are only going to do two things they multiply and they store honey and if you're not treating them and they're multiplying out that fast they're they going to swarm. That's just natural. Well, and see, that had like to happen to me this year. Uh, when I first went into them, oh, my gosh, every one of them were full of swarm hives. Swarm so I Yeah, so I actually took, made three splits, cut the rest of all of the swarm hives out, all of them, except for one hive. What did you do with the you cut out? What did I do with them? Yeah. Well, I made three splits with them. Well, well you, you had more than three cells there. Yeah, but I'm not very neat. I just kind of, <laughs> yeah, I got three out of them. I'll just put it, I'll put it that way. I got three out of them. Got, but the what got me was the one that I did not take any sw swarm cells out of. That box swarmed four times. You missed a swarm cell somewhere. 
Yeah, and they swore them four times on me till they were nothing. In fact, that hive's completely gone now. It's a learning thing. Yeah, because I always, only thought they swore them one time, but they did. They swore them actually four times, one hive. So I learned a great lesson, cut them all out. Yeah. Well, does that, does that help answer your question? Yes, it did, and thank you so much. Okay. Okay. And I think Pat wants to add something to that. I'm not sure. Pat, go ahead. Yeah, um, for fire ants, we had them here a couple of years ago, and I got a lot of grandkids, and they like to play with things. And so if you take your shovel and you go over to one fire ant hill and you get a big scoop, and you go over and put that on top of another fire ant hill, they will fight and kill each other and then go back to the original hive and kill that one too. And you will not have fire ants if you do it and get rid of them. It gets rid of them. That's pretty cutthroat cool there, Pat. And there's no chemicals. <laughs> they defensive thing. They'll kill that hive. Well, it works. <laughs> hey, I have boy grandchildren <laughs> and anything that, you know, entertains them in the country. <laughs> it works. <laughs> hey, Pat, the first That's rule of Ant Fight free. Club is not to talk about Ant Fight Club. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> hey, we're, we're out here in the country. <laughs> it's slow entertainment, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> hmm. That's good. That's good to know for a lot of people, I'm sure. Anything else, Pat? No, that was it for okay. now. <laughs> Uh, I got no other hands up, um, so I'm going to take a web question. Uh, Kristen asks, she's in South Carolina, bees just swarm, is it too late to let the queen cells in the original hive develop into a sustaining hive to overwinter? She's in Charleston, South Carolina. It's never too late. I mean, you, whenever you make the split, you're going to have to feed them, but they will make it. The main thing is where she's at, she should still have drones, so she wouldn't have to worry about that. I would go ahead and either cut the cells and make a split, or if you don't want to split anymore, just get rid of the cells or give them to a friend. Okay. All right. Uh, come on, people, raise those hands. Dennis is sitting ahead of your chair. He's waiting to tell us something. All right. <laughs> Dennis, you got something for us? No. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> All I know is I think I'm going to have to get mad at Don. What do you do now? Well, if you follow his methods, you get so many bees, you just work yourself to death. <laughs> no, everything's running smooth. We're uh, four days out from getting 60 degree weather during the day and 40 degrees at night. And I still have a little bit of work to do, but they look good. Just trying to get everything caught up, the shims put on and We'll see. We'll see if I learned anything from last year. <laughs> but no, everything's doing fine. All right. And we don't have fire ants. I'm glad. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. And now the questions are coming in. So over to Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, Don, I've got some singles that are just extremely strong right now. Is it too late to pour a double on there and let them go ahead and get started on it? Yeah, you know, like I just said, you know, you're going to have to feed them, but, you know, to me, I like to run numbers. I don't like to run, you know, one major strong high, five, ten boxes high. I like to keep them singles through the winter, and if they're strong enough, eight frame, make three splits. That's me. All right, Don. Um, let let me mute myself so you my wife started doing something out there. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, over to Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. Got to get unmuted. All right. So, um, yeah, I think I unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep, we hear you. Perfect. All right. So I have a couple hives, and I, I kind of screwed up. I made a bunch of splits, and instead of filling the – uh, five frame with, you know, all the all, all of the frames. I kind of left maybe like three frames while they build up. Well, they they built you know comb down off of the uh, the roof. So I did a cutout. I put them in the frames, 
but now I'm finding that they're not really building the combs up to the top of the frames where I put the cut out. They're kind of bracing it to the side of the box or to the next frame over. Did you um, put some yarn around it or rubber bands to, you know, secure it? Yeah, I used rubber bands. Yeah, ru rubber right. bands. Are you but they, them? You know, they, they chew and through the rubber bands. The rubber, but they're not going to attach it. Is that just a, the trick to it is just to feed them until they draw it up and then cut it? Well, if you're not eating, you're not going to want to work. They just, just like the bees. If they're not getting enough food or well, they're you know, building the comb, but they, yeah, I mean they're building the comb, but they're bracing it to the side of the box and the next frame over. In addition to building up, the frames have to be uh, leaning for them to do that, or there's your spacing is not right. Are you using standard frames? Yeah, yeah standard frames and standard size boxes. But are you pushing the frames together? Or you have space in the frames with space between them. Yeah, the, no, the the frames are together, but they're 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 building up, but they're not. I guess I need to feed them more first of all. But they, they they're building up, but they're also building out to brace it to either side of it. So is that? I mean, just keep feeding them until they they attach it, and then go in there and I cut would, the sides out, or I would keep feeding them, and I'd get in there with a knife, a small paring knife, and that, and just trim one frame at a time yeah. and trim it. And you can take that wax that you trim and just poke it into the holes, and they'll use that to build with. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to get the feet on them. Yeah. You got to put the feed to them to make them draw wax. Yeah. What what kind of feed right now? Is it still two to one, or I never really feed one to one. I'm it's using, kind of two to one. I'm using corn syrup, pure stuff. Like, Oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, where you where you live at? Uh, southeastern Pennsylvania. Well, you still should be uh, getting a little bit of the gold rod. John probably knows what they're getting up there now. Yeah, the the early the early gold rod came in, but uh, my area is it's the the big gold rod flow is still like a week or two off you can start to see them turn the yellow but they're not really yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. feed them yeah all right thank you okay and over to patricia go ahead pat yeah this is for andrew a uh, couple of things uh, make sure that there's no propolis on the little pieces where your frames touch. Scrape the propolis off, make sure they're touching completely. Trim any wax that sticks out past that. Um, take the frame and rotate it completely to the other, so that you turn it 180 degrees around and put it in. Yep. It, it kind of confuses them so they think, oh, we're in a different place and it'll stop them from cross combing, which is going you know, from comb to comb. And make sure that your frames are completely pushed together as tight as possible and evenly from the sides of the box. I take my finger and measure the distance top and bottom to make sure that they're square in the box. Because if they're off just a little bit, or if there's propolis between those two end pieces and it makes one frame a little cockeyed, they'll draw cattywonker comb all over the place and they can make a big mess. You think it's bad now, leave it and see what happens. You can't get the box open. That's, um, I know. And That's feed them, like Don kind of said. They need top of it. Yeah, yeah the, the, turn the frame. There's only some uh, certain times when you'll turn a frame, and this is one of them. You need to change the bees. They're yeah. just stuck in one spot. So just turn it, and it'll confuse them enough that they'll keep on drawing wax, but they'll not make that cross cone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so when you take, take the frames out to inspect them, just take your hive tool and kind of scrape those, those end pieces off to get that propolis yep. off? Yep. Okay. Every time I take and scrape that propolis off, and you can save that propolis, and uh, it's good for your health, and you can sell it. So uh, that's something yeah. to consider. That's a high product that's mm -hmm. uh, highly desirable. Health food stores, yeah. you can advertise it on Facebook and people will come by it. So that's something, but 
um, you want those frames to be completely pushed together so that they can't have any yeah. uh, extra room. A little bit extra room goes right to their head. And this time of year, it's kind of hard anyway because bees are getting ready for winter. They're not necessarily getting ready to make more bees. They're sort of settling in for the winter. And so yeah. they're not making, they're not in wax production mode like they are in early spring, but you can trick them by feeding them heavily. So I would even go two and a half to one. You want to make it a thick, heavy syrup. Like Don says, it should be like, you know, the syrup in a can of peaches. And if it's not, you're not making it thick enough, but that'll stimulate them, stimulate their wax glands. Okay. All, right. All set, Andrew? Thank you. Yep. Okay. And over to Matt. Go ahead, Matt. And unmute it. Yes, no, maybe. Microphone's not on. No, he's just not unmuting it. Now it's frozen, it looks like. Okay, I guess we'll come back. Uh, John Zirkel, go ahead. And John, you there? Hey, good evening, everybody. How you doing? Okay. Good. Andrew, yeah, we've been in a, a drought here, a Darth, I guess, for about a month. So you probably should have been feeding them pretty heavy. We're feeding them over here. I'm feeding one to one high fruit juice corn syrup. And uh, our weights are pretty heavy on our hives. Are your hives light? Are they putting away a lot of stores? Hang on. Yeah, they're they're full of honey they're just not i think i'm looking back at the problem i think half of it is i'm using the uh the quart jars the mason jars and i got two only two holes in it and when i have the um don i got your your plans and and use your feeders and they they suck down uh two quarts in a day and a half and that quart <laughs> jar last two days I was going to go, sorry but um I think maybe putting a couple more holes in or, or making a couple more of those feeders might be the key. Okay. Um, and I had to be That's okay. Uh, we're going to try Matt again. Go ahead, Matt. You hear me? Yep, got you that time. Oh, good deal. I got a phone call a second ago is why I couldn't answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, my question is, uh, my hives, I've got several of them starting to make uh, drone sales again. And my fixing to start having queen sales in the hives or what? It's possible. How old's your comb? Uh, everything's this year's. You might have a damaged queen in there. That, that's a possibility. Or the, the hive got hot and the frame so the cells are starting to stretch out and they're using it for honey uh, storage now is the uh, well no, i'm talking about they're making drones they should they're be not making just making drones, drones. they're going to replace your queen this time of the year well i've got i don't know i looked around and seen four or five uh hives have got drone sales a lot of them yeah. And it's something not right over there then. They shouldn't be doing that time of year. Clean old uh, drone comb. You know, you, some yeah. people don't check their comb really good and they have drone comb on it and they never spot it until, you know, towards the fall. Then all of a sudden they, they realize that's drone comb. Yeah, but that. Uh... I understand that, but they're actually making drones. They, they're getting uh, ready to swarm or something. It don't sound normal. Have you found a pattern where the, the queen's land? Yeah, I mean, the queen is still, I found her. She's in there. She's laying. But are you laying? Is she laying good? Well, I can't answer that because I didn't look close enough for that. I just seen the drone sales and. I didn't know really if, they, if she's been the faith thing to start making Mississippi. Too well, you're hot enough over there right now that that queen would be laying at least four or five frames of bees over there for you right now. Yeah, they're like they're laying pretty good. All my bees are. 
Oh, uh, but I got to know some. With bees? Do what now? Is the box packed with bees? Not necessarily packed, but it's got bees. You know, it's full of bees, but I wouldn't say packed. You know, bees is anything is possible. You know, you can get hype this time of year where it makes, you know, drones and start to swarm. When you think you got them figured out, they'll show you something new, new all the time. But where you're at, you've got a lot of moisture yeah. over there. So, you know, it's, that could be something too. Well, when I seen them, uh, them drone sales, I looked in there and for queen sales, I didn't see none, but that don't mean they not fixing to start making them, you know. Usually they'll make those oh. drones, if they're going to swarm, they'll make drones three to four weeks ahead of time. And see, that's what don't add up. If they're making drones right now, that would put you way out into October. And the bees, I don't think they're that dumb. They're going to start throwing queens that quick, you know, in October. I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering why. You know, and, and just look and see, you know, look at the frame. If you can lay a dollar bill across them, you've got too many drones that they're making. If you can fold a dollar bill in, in half and cover the amount of drones in one corner, that could be normal. Okay. I probably don't have enough to where you could cover up with a dollar. Well, then. I'm going to say you can't cover them. The drones got you scared. Yeah. You know, sometimes people, if they don't have experience, they see a half a dozen drone and they get worried they're going to have a swarm. That's not true well, all the time. Well, it's like I've, like I've told you before. I, You know, I ain't been uh, raising bees but about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've, I've learned a lot here since last year. But anyway, uh, I just didn't know about these these uh, drone sales being uh, all of a sudden appearing this late in the year because last year in the fall i didn't have a five hives i've got 70 now so uh i'm seeing a lot more than i did last year yeah well you're you're paying attention each year you're going to be more observant and more observant and but now the patch they'd cover it probably less than a dollar bill but i wouldn't really so you're saying that it. would be possibly normal yeah. You know, I, okay. I do a lot of videos, probably do too many videos, but I've mentioned it on chats and I mentioned it in videos. You know, if you could cover it with a dollar bill, you know, it's a dollar bill in half and cover them up, you're going to have drones in frames. They, okay. they put the so drones that's... there because they want them. Yeah. And they ain't putting drones out because they fix and start trying to swarm. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. If you worry about going in every three weeks, uh, if you don't want to split no more, if you see drones or a queen, cut them down. Yeah. Well, I don't. I wouldn't mind splitting some more, but uh, I don't know. It's getting so late in the year. I just don't know. I need to be in now or not? Well, it depends on how much of a gambler you are, you know. If I got queen cells in the bee yard here, I'll split up in, uh, you know, middle of October. But, you know, I understand I'm feeding year-round. I'm not worried about a honey flow. That's the yeah. least. Of, I'm worried about bees and queens laying because that's a sellable product in the springtime. Sugar oh, yeah. is immaterial or corn syrup. That's immaterial. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm still feeding now. I mean, that's that's uh, not a big deal, uh, and I've still I've still got a few uh, sales in my queen starter, but uh, my starter's getting low of bees, and I'm not really adding them more because it's being so late. I don't yeah. really want to take bees from my other hive to get it back up again, uh, cause it being so late. So. Accelerator, you wouldn't get those numbers one year. Yeah. Well, I've had a pretty good year this year. I mean, I've got probably half of them hives that I've got is double fives or double eights. You'll be ready to start selling the springtime then. 
Yeah, I've got – I mean, I started out this year, like I said, with five hives. I didn't have much. I've got bees now. I mean, I can safely say I have bees. That's good. And uh, and I've learned enough this year. I feel comfortable that I could have however many hives I want next year. Time to retire and do it full time. Well, I said, like I said, I ain't tried to really sell none yet. I told y'all that last chat. And uh, I got to see the markets there first. <laughs> <laughs> but uh the market's there believe me but uh well i feel i sort of feel like it is but uh i hadn't stuck my foot into it yet i'm starting to uh do i, I need to be go ahead and get my website going don't i that would be a good idea a lot of people start taking their I've orders already. october and november and by january they're done booked already yeah. Well, I ain't set up a website. I've got a Facebook page, but uh, I hadn't set up a website. I'm fixing to work on that. <laughs> I'm well, dragging if you my help, let me know, Matt. I, that's what I do. Okay. Well, thank you very much, then. I may have to get out with you. Sure, definitely. All right. Anything else? That's it, I reckon. Okay. Uh, Todd, did you still have a question? Uh, I kind of have the opposite problem that Matt does, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I'm not looking to breed any queens, and I know they're they're not gonna they're not gonna mate with their own drones. But I don't have any drones, so I, I'm wondering if I have a health problem in the hive. I, I don't know what's going on. Last year, this time last year. I had lots of drones and the average temperature right now at this time of year is around 94 degrees. So weather is not a factor. It's just, I don't have drones. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Well, bees know more than we do. All we can do is help them along. Yeah. I mean, I, um, it's been a weird year because, uh, I rely on a plant called blue curl to uh, feed the bees. It's what um, it, it grows in this area in central California. And, it, you know, it's just like a goldenrod crop somewhere else. But I use it to, uh, you know, to, to mainly, or I rely on it for them to, to get enough feed. And then I supplement it with, you know, sugar water if they don't have enough. But that plant this year came up and it pushed only a couple flowers out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just been really strange. Yeah. So it's I don't know. Nationwide, everywhere. Yeah. Huh. So, but that was my question. I just don't have drones. <laughs> Any chance you're just coming out of a nurse? So long. The smoke over there, you know, could be affecting, you know, the drone population. That's what I'm thinking. That's kind of the wild card. And, and, um, yeah, I've been, you know, we're, we are coming out of a dearth. Well, we're not really out of a dearth right now because that blue curl hasn't pushed out. Um, thistle came out and that was pretty good, but mm -hmm. uh, it's gone. So I don't know. It's just any, weird. Any evidence of them eating the drones and to kick them out then? No, uh, I I've not seen drone comb in probably two months, three hmm. months. Hmm. All right. Well, if you had drones last year, you didn't change your comb, did you? Um, what do you mean change? If you removed the comb from last year and you added all new foundation, then you have all worker cells. Well, I had I, earlier in the year, I had some, uh, some drone cells that they drew down from uh, starter strips. And then, you know, I've had to put some starter strips in there, but they're not, they're not putting in uh, drone comb now. I mean, there's still the old drone comb from starter strips at the beginning of the year. But, but, but it had drone drawn out in it. I, I couldn't hear you on that one. If the uh, drone comb you had from last year, if it's still there and they're not laying drones in, it might be that smoke. You know, I'm no expert on that out there, but sometimes the weather, the humidity, things have a lot to do with the way the bees reproduce. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, it could be very, it very well could be the smoke. I mean, 
gosh, you know, if you looked out my window here yesterday, it looked orange. I thought I was on Mars. There's so mm. much smoke. It's terrible. And then there's another one that just started up in the Sierras right now. So, you know, and I'm 30 miles away. Well, keep your so, garden hose close. <laughs> it's it's bad. It, wake up in the morning and there's ash all over your car. It looks like someone barbecued on it. Mm. But anyway, that's that's all I had was about the drone. Okay. Uh, over to Patricia. Go ahead, Pat. On mute. I forget the button all the time. Sorry about that. Um, bees don't need drones in their hive. The queen does not mate with her own drones normally. Um, so you'll have hives side by side. One will have a lot and have many drones. It's usually a sign of a healthy hive that they have a, a random amount of drones. And there's some research that says that drones have a happiness pheromone that makes the hive content, makes them uh, support the queen more, bring in more food, to, because drones don't do anything but consume resources. So if you're under any kind of stress, dirt, smoke, anything like that, the drones are the first thing they cut out because that's one less thing they have to feed and care for. So that would be my suspicion too. Like Don said, I'm suspicious of the smoke, putting them into a stress mode. Um, and the, you, know, you can uh, turn the sprinkler on them in the afternoon and try and bring down some of that smoke that's around the hives. Uh, calm the air down around them, bring the moisture up a little bit. Uh, but other than that, uh, don't worry about it as long as the bees are still in the hive and you've got babies. If you've got baby bees in the hive, you know, uncapped brood and cat brood and, and it's, everything else is good, don't worry about your uh, drone level. If you have a lot of drones, like Matt said he had, that's usually a sign of a failing queen. And you could see the queen and she looks good, but if you bumped her with a frame or your hive tool or, you know, picked her up and held her and mashed her up just a teeny bit, her version of being mashed or squished or whatever is different from ours. And it could be that you damaged her or the bees have damaged her or something went wrong with her. So I would watch your drone levels. If you really notice an increase, then that's a concern. But if you just look down in there and saw some drone comb, that doesn't mean anything. You have to do a full inspection. You have to go down to the bottom box frame by frame in order to assess what the, uh, how many drones you have in there. One frame at the top box doesn't really reflect for inspection on that. That's all. Okay. And over to Matt. Go ahead, Matt. You hear me? Yep. All right. I got one more question. I've got six double uh, eights that I need to move, and, I, and I'm not moving them by about 100 yards. What's the best way to move them? Then? We just pick them up. I mean, are they going to try to go back? Well, if you're worried about them going now? back, if you're worried about them going back, you can screen them up. But if we if we move them in the same bee yard, a couple hundred yards, we just put a five frame box in the place where that hive was moved, and we put a queen cell in it, catch the foragers, and then we just have another nuke going. Okay, they won't be that many of them to go back, go will it? Well, you never know. I mean. I never knew that bees stayed out, you know, all night until I started moving to Florida. And we'd go down there at 3 or 4 in the morning and put screens over everything. You'd go to McDonald's and have breakfast and come back after daybreak, you know, to start loading. And there would be a pound of bees on the entrance. So those bees was out all night. So they'll hang on yeah. trees and stuff when the weather's not good and they'll come back the next day. You're never going to move a hive and get every single bee. Well, I know I've I've moved some uh, smaller, my two or uh, five framers, and uh, and I got to know some bees coming back. So I just got put one of the little queen boxes over there and caught a few like that, and then just had loaded a queen box that way. Yeah, I mean, but, we uh, do that as a regular practice. 
but uh being this late in the year and stuff i've got like i said i've got six they actually in my my deer food plot and they're needing to get out of the food plot i've pushed off another little spot of my land off to fix me up another little spot for my bees i just had them set up in my in my uh, deer food plot so they've got to leave there <laughs> and uh and i've got to uh move them i've moved about 100 to 150 yards and to where i've got stands and stuff built for them over there and and i just wondered about if i move them is there going to be a bunch of them i ain't moved a double eight yet and i didn't move know how many of them would probably go back you're always going to have Do some what? stragglers you'll always have some stragglers a lot of times this time of the year yeah. they're hanging around another hive and they'll slowly start merging Okay. Is that it, Matt? Yeah, that's all my question. Okay. And I think we got one more question from Wanda. Go ahead, Wanda. This isn't really a question. It's kind of it plays into what Matt and I think his name was Jeffrey were talking about. Uh, I was talking to a beekeeper and they were telling me the same thing. They had an astronomical amount of drones at this time of the year. So I started reading and there is a thing that they call a drone queen. And it's a queen that's not properly mated, and that's what she does. She makes drones. And this is what this article said. Replace her immediately, unless you want drones. Mm -hmm. I have never heard of it before in my life. Like I said, I read it. Um, but that may be his situation. I, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen any in ours, so I guess ours is okay. But I had, I just wanted to give him that bit of the knowledge. Google it, look it up, because there is a thing they call a drone queen, and that's all she lays, drones, either that or a worker. Okay. So, and Pat, I want to tell you, thank you very much for the fire ant um, comment that you made. I'm going to try it. First thing tomorrow, so I will let you know. I pray to God it works because we have them so bad. We can't, we can't even protect ourselves from being outside. But uh, that's really all I wanted to, wanted to say was just that I've really enjoyed you guys. I have to go to bed, but I just wanted to throw that out there to Matt. Uh, Google that, and what I looked up is called a drone queen. Okay. And it's basically a felling queen, and she's laying you all drones. Replace her. But read about it, because I would never tell you. I, you know, I got a thing about losing queens, so I would never tell you. But read on that, and I think you'll find your answer. Okay. Thank you. All right. If there are no more questions, that'll be it, that'll be it for tonight. Thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone. And have a good uh, uh, Labor Day. Appreciate everybody showing up. See you in two weeks. Right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.